For the duration of today's flight, we ask that you wear a face covering as required by Transport Canada. In my last video, we traveled from Tokyo Narita all the way to Vancouver, British Columbia. After our 9 hours of flying, delicious meals, and a bit of rest, it was time to reset and continue to Toronto. Jet lagged, tired, yet excited, and living this day again thanks to the International Dateline, we picked back thanks up watching, after I passed through I security in Vancouver. Right. Now, and good morning and welcome back to another trip report. About 30 minutes ago, I landed in Vancouver from my Tokyo to Vancouver flight. And I'm going to be continue, continuing on my way to Toronto with Air Canada on their classic Tr Vancouver to Toronto route. But in which class, I don't know as of yet. I put in an upgrade request, so I'm either going to be in economy class, premium economy, or business class, since right now I believe I'm on the wait list. So we'll see what happens for today. My flight's at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and it's about 10.30 now again on July 5th. This video is actually being filmed earlier than the last video which was filmed earlier but still on July 5th because we crossed over that date line so today is a very long July 5th for myself. So I do have some time so I think I'm gonna go check out the lounge relax a little bit. So come along let's see how the cookie crumbles today as we go from A to B. I welcome you back on my trip to Toronto. I completed my first leg landing in Vancouver a bit earlier. I went through security at the A and B gates and had to walk back to the C gates. Nothing too far and probably a quick stroll after being on that last flight did me well. There is security by the C gates and it's just off the camera on the right side. Furthermore, you'll see that Plaza Premium also has a little cafe area off to the left. Turning left and down this little half flight of stairs and we'll reach the domestic Maple Leaf Lounge. Air Canada has three lounges in this airport, with one located in the international area, transborder after US immigration, and of course this one here in the domestic wing. There's a variety of ways to gain access. Having a business class ticket will do the trick. Also having Star Alliance Gold status will get you in. Personally, at this point, I get a few passes every year with my Air Canada status. So this particular visit is not tied into my ticket in any way. This was my first time in the Vancouver Domestic Lounge, and I was surprised how small it was compared to the ones in other larger airports. It was fairly busy during my time and this high traffic lounge is definitely showing its age. One thing this lounge does have are nice views of the outside with the mountains to the north. The lounge has a variety of seating and I found a place to relax near the end. There was a reasonable food selection ranging from breakfast to light lunch options and some easier grab and go items for something quick. I helped myself to a happy selection but certainly enjoyed this beef chili. Other hot foods can be ordered via the QR codes found throughout the lounge, though I didn't bother. And once the sun hit that special part of the sky, or 11 a.m., guests could help themselves to the self-serve bar, and I went with a morning Caesar. Whoever conceived that clam juice and tomato juice went well together, thank you. I spent my remaining time resting and catching up on the internet. All right, so I was able to get to the lounge for about 90 minutes, freshen up, grab something to eat, change into a new set of clothes. So I'm, I'm good to go for my next flight, and which is departing from C50, which is right behind me. And uh, it's just about 12 o'clock now, so they're gonna start boarding in about probably 15 minutes. Actually, you can probably hear it going on right now. So yeah, let's just hang out here and we'll be on board in a few minutes.
well I guess it's a economy flight review today. It turned out I was five away from being upgraded so that's the way it goes I guess when you, you put in a, uh, an upgrade request sometimes it goes sometimes it doesn't go but I'm 42A and I get a nice view so I think it's going to be a great flight. Air Canada has a single layout for their 787-9 with 298 seats over the three classes and this particular aircraft was delivered back in August 2015. There are currently 29 in Air Canada's fleet. And for some comparison, ANA's 787-9s contain 246 seats. So Air Canada went with a larger economy class with this aircraft. Today's four and a half hour cross country flight will mostly take us along the Canada US border before dipping into southern Ontario. Economy is in a 333 configuration with 84 more seats in this rear cabin compared to the forward economy section. Those larger windows found on the Dreamliner bring in lots of light on these daytime flights. The seats are dark blue and provide an adjustable headrest. Unlike for international flights, there is no pillow or blanket waiting on the seat. Seatback contains the 8.9 inch monitor, which can be adjusted should the person in front of you recline their seat, and has a headphone jack and USB slot. There's the table and a single pocket below. The seat pocket contains a safety card, and like on the last aircraft, had seen better days. There's a 31 inch seat pitch providing enough space to store a bag without it being too cluttered. And there's a power socket between the seats in the bottom left there. And above you have the reading light and air control. The IFE on the Dreamliner is nice and quick. I thought the selection on this aircraft was much larger than my previous flight. I'm unsure if there's a different selection based on whether it's a domestic or international flight, or perhaps I didn't check the IFE in as much detail on my first flight. Nonetheless, I settled on planet Earth too. Dreamliners are Wi-Fi equipped, and there's a variety of plans to choose from should you wish to use it. One thing I noticed is that the costs are based on the distance of the flight. This flight is shorter than my previous, and the cost to access Wi-Fi reflected this. And of course, if you're a new visitor, welcome to my little corner of the internet. And I invite you to subscribe for continued aviation, the odd train, and other travel-related content. You can also find me on Twitter, where I post throughout my travel days. Air Canada offers their onboard bistro on domestic flights for those wishing to have something beyond a complimentary, complimentary, I can't even say that word, complimentary drink. Passengers can buy a voucher online before checking into their flight or can pay on board. I was pretty good for my time in the lounge, so I just went with a Coke. I had two people beside me, so when I had the chance, I jumped out to check out the rear lavatory. In the previous video, I showed you the one between the two economy cabins, and I found the ones in the rear of the aircraft a bit more comfortable with the space inside.
this flight was part of my Tokyo to Toronto return ticket, which came out to $1,760 for the three flights on this itinerary. This second flight completes the first half of this trip. Well, after two flights, we made it to Toronto and that last flight from Vancouver, nice smooth flight, I really enjoyed it. And I actually like the in-flight entertainment options on this aircraft. I don't know if there's a difference between uh, if there's a domestic flight or an international flight, if the in-flight entertainment is different or it's just the aircraft. But I thought there was a better selection on this flight. Anyways, uh, let me know what you thought about the flight. I'm gonna try and get my luggage here. I hope it's not too long. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you around next time.